My name is Isham Udgiri. I'm the CEO of Enigma. We're an open data technology company that connects organizations to the world around them. We won TechCrunch Disrupt in 2013 by collecting the broadest array of public data on the market. Anything from who's on an H-1B visa to you know, cargo container shipments. And we've scaled the company. We've raised $34 million, grown the team to 55 people, and helped some of the most sophisticated organizations in the Fortune 500 solve data challenges, again, by recontextualizing their data and giving it a new meaning by connecting it to the data, broadly speaking, in the world. Now, what I want to talk to you today is really about the technology that's enabled this massive scale. And people in our business talk about scale like there's some sort of magic formula. But when you think about it, scale is really freaking hard, right? So let's think about a system. Get my clicker to work here. Uh-oh. There we go. New York City, Sandy hits. Millions of people out of power. This entire neighborhood in Brooklyn flooded underwater. And my clicker is kind of crappy today. Let's try that again. Ah, I have to go do that manually. Thank you. This entire city flooded underwater. And the thing about scale that people don't notice well, they never notice the problem coming, right? The whole point is that the system breaks because there's a chain of dependencies of failures that just build upon each other. And, you know, as a species being, I think one thing we do really well is have this urge to invent and create around these problems. Now, no one, you know, who was building and selling the first mainframe computers would have ever imagined that we'd have to connect millions of PCs, let alone billions of devices, to each other, right? And that, that sort of ingenuity and that sort of spirit is just, just a fascinating thing to see. But I ask you, and of course it exists in logistics and transport, the airport, sort of amazing thing, but I ask you, what's next? Like, what will we have to do for a supply chain to start to actually be intelligent and self-healing? Right, we want this medicine to be pulled off a shelf before any kid dies, right? And so this future requires massive orchestration of these many moving parts, and it requires data to flow in infinitely modular pipelines. So today, um, if I could help with the next slide, today we are releasing Parskit. We are reinventing data operations, very much so like our forefathers before us, folks like Google and Amazon who have understood if you need to deploy billions of server, uh, millions of servers across, across global data centers, you need to abstract away infrastructure operations. And we're doing the exact same thing with data. So let me show you a little bit what this is about. Press play again to start the video. So Parskit, first of all, is a markup language. Think about it much like Ansible, you know, gives you the power of custom code when you need it, but really lets you assemble from modular steps and pipelines the sort of things that you need to do to abstract data operations. It's a runtime, of course, that allows you to execute parses. And it's also a cloud, an execution platform, be it private or publicly hosted, very much so like uh, you know Heroku or so on and so forth, purpose built for the job of ingesting data. Very easy to go in, you add a parse, connect it to your you know, GitHub or whatever code repository system that you use. And what Parskit allows to do is it brings back you know, very much so this notion of infinite dynamic scaling for ingestion. Now, we're not talking about I need to bring in you know, a dozen data sets, 50 data sets, so on and so forth. We're talking about the sort of work that we do at Enigma, thousands of data sets being refreshed every day. You need metrics for this. You need collaboration tools. And this is what we've done with Parskit. So the, the promise that we want to give you today, and, and kind of the reminder that we want to leave the stage with, is that we built Parskit out of our own needs. For Enigma, for collecting the most kind of broadest you know, source of, of public data on the market, but also for our clients who are having a hard time integrating data across the enterprise. And that's the design promise that I want to leave you with. We're a data company. We're a technology company. We use our products every day. Anything we find in the wild, be it some legacy COBOL or you know, uh, AS400 AS system that we need to integrate in, we'll productize that in a Parskit step 
and leave it up to you. So come talk to us about the next generation of scale in data operations. Thank you. That was awesome. Enigma, good job. And another five minutes for Farmigo. Big round of applause for Farmigo. Come on out here. Take it away, man. Good afternoon. So I was on this stage in 2011. I'm Ben C. Ronan, far, the founder of Farmigo, and I was one of those startups that was in the battlefield. We made it as a finalist. And I can totally empathize with all the startups that are backstage right now, kind of sweating and trying to figure out if this is their make or break day. And we're five years later, so I'm kind of happy to still be around to tell you the progress that we've made. And the way I want to do that is tell you a little bit about what Farmigo was for me and what got me started. I moved my family to Brooklyn, and we were looking for places where we could get fresh food that was healthy for our family. And we wanted like a farmer's market, direct from harvest place where we could get this amazing food. And we were walking to the supermarkets and seeing food that really wasn't that good, wasn't very healthy for us, wasn't at all fresh, was on the shelves with about 10 days. And so what I decided to do was I went to the tenants in my apartment building and I said, who shares this problem and would like kind of a farmer's market pop-up to come to our apartment building? And I got half of the people to say, we would do this. So put together a website that was a marketplace where you could pick and choose from different farms, food artisans, fishermen, meat farmers, dairy farmers, pick whatever you want. It would then be brought to my apartment, literally. I would have neighbors coming to my apartment with their kids to pick up their food. Uh, it was incredibly successful, and my neighbors came to me and said, look, this is replacing our need to go to the supermarket. Can you make sure that we're doing this week over week? And this was really the formation of Farmigo, and we started to turn this into a platform where many people like myself that we call Farmigo organizers, who are volunteers in their neighborhoods, could start pop-up farmer's markets. Today we have over 150 farmer's markets that are in schools where the parents can place their orders online from local food artisans and farmers, have the food delivered directly to them straight from harvest, uh, and pick it up, it actually becomes a fundraiser for schools. We have about 400 of these across the country. We're right now in Seattle, Northern California, New Jersey, and New York. Uh, and we're having, we've delivered over a million items now coming from the farm directly to the consumer. And so if you start to look in the future going forward, what can this look like at scale? How can we ensure that we can have a local food system that is highly distributed, that allows farmers to grow organically in a, in a way that's sustainable also from a business perspective? And we think we have a platform that allows people in suburbs where you can't have farmer's markets because you don't have the density, where you don't have very good supermarkets, allow people to get affordable food, all of their fresh needs, allow the farmer to get 60% of the transactions, so for them it's a very good business proposition, um, and they don't have to do any of the sales and marketing. Right? So that's kind of the vision going forward. In order to pull this off, you need to figure out how to build the supply chain that goes from the farmer directly to the consumer. There's a cold chain that needs to be managed, there's food safety, um, there's regulation, and you want to make sure you're getting the right quality. So Farmigo being a software-oriented company, we started to replace any hardware that we could with software to ensure we were building a platform that not only enabled the marketplace to work from a transaction level, but also for the full supply chain to work. Um, that's basically the platform that we've built, and uh, we hope that we can service you as customers across the country. Thank you. My mom said punctuality is like the most important thing, and I really appreciate Farmigo for that, because he has 20 seconds left on the clock, so that's awesome. Agrilist is our uh, next presenter, and they actually won at our most recent American Disrupt in San Francisco. So congratulations on the win, won. America! <laughs> Make America great again. No. <laughs> Uh, you can take that as an anti-endorsement from us. Anyway, uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Allison Cuff. I'm the founder and CEO of Agrilis. Um, and we're incredibly excited to be here today, especially because it's our hometown of Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn, that's it? OK, cool. Two people from Brooklyn here. Um, and we're uh, excited to update you on what we've been doing from, since winning Disrupt. Agrilist is a management platform for indoor farms. We help growers understand what's going on in their farms at all times and make recommendations for improvement. 
the uh, six months ago, I stood up on a stage just like this, but in San Francisco, and said, farming is hard. And we launched a beta of our platform that aggregated data from sensors and spreadsheets and to a simple management tool for indoor growers so that they could plan production operations more efficiently. And, and we won Disrupt. <laughs> and, and with Disrupt, and that was incredible for our company. Since that day in September, we've been pretty busy. Uh, we've raised a funding round of a million dollars from some great investors. Our team has tripled in size. We've added engineers who have scaled platforms for, for tens of millions of users. We've added data scientists who have specialties in ecology, sales operations leaders who have scaled teams in top agricultural companies, and even a game designer who spends her free time building pollination models. And we're still hiring. But more importantly, we've spent our time talking and working with some of the best indoor growers, and we've built the world's first end-to-end -end management system specifically designed for indoor vegetable growers. Now, growers, can, and we're tremendously excited, not skip over this, but we're gonna be launching that live now, today. Uh, now growers can manage their crop data directly in their platform digitally as opposed to spending hours every day uh, recording data manually. Growers can manage their tasks in a simple task list. They can assign tasks to employees so you can begin to forecast labor hours more efficiently. And you can track inventory coming into the facility for better traceability. All of this data is then summarized in a simple dashboard where growers can check their real-time financial performance, upcoming tasks, check sensor data coming in from deployed hardware, and even plant performance and, and simple yield metrics. And all of this data uh, is, is there in a customizable way. But there's more. Agrilist learns from this data. The, uh, your data coupled with all the other farm data in the platform and adding in academic research and industry knowledge contributes to what we call our grower knowledge base. And that knowledge base then goes and pushes back recommendations to the growers so they can not only plan production more proactively, but also mitigate some risks that could be potentially devastating to their bottom line. This all helps us get to a point where you can define and maintain optimal performance states. But that's just the first step. The future is using our data to stretch the boundaries of what those optimal performance states are and turn farms into a class of assets that's both predictable and financeable. Imagine growing food specifically for health benefits or optimized for flavor profile or color or texture. That future isn't far away. If you're a vegetable grower, you can reach out to us now. We're you know, live as of right now, and, um, and we're actively adding new growers to the platform. Um, and before I end, because I'm out of time, we have one quick other announcement. We are excited to announce that this summer we'll be launching a brand new product specifically optimized for cannabis. Um, so I'll take the time to thank uh, TechCrunch for inviting us back to update. Thanks to all of you. Good luck to all the Battlefield teams. I know what you must be feeling right now. And we've got a quick video to show you.